joining me today. I want to preface this talk by saying I'm speaking to both the sales and marketing ops team, the business process teams, and the IT and DevOps teams that support them. So let's start by introducing me. I'm MH Lines. I'm a founder at Stack Moxie. We're an observability platform for the end-to-end -end sales and marketing tech stack. I've made a career of jumping between product, marketing, and channel, and now I'm building a solution to help run the technology that puts it all together. I think the most important concept of incident remediation is planning. It's impossible to think about what can go wrong. It's endless. But it's critical to think about what you'll do when something inevitably does go wrong. In sales and marketing systems, the average enterprise has 91 tools in their tech stack. 91 tools. It happened little by little, but today it is a system, the very definition of a network. If your teams don't think about quality in the beginning and a little bit of cleanup every time they launch a campaign, that sales and marketing tech stack system is a disorganized mess that begets chaos. In DevOps and IT, there is a lot of background in system thinking. The idea of code coverage is baked into most everything you do, but for marketing and sales ops teams, Unit testing, much less smoke testing or regression testing, are just brand new concepts. However, fails, systems breaking, and sales and marketing, that's pretty much par for the course. Planning with the goal of stopping things from ever breaking is pretty much useless. Something will break. How much attention, how much attention have you given to what happens after something breaks? Communication is what keeps your teams on the same side, working together against the air. It is critical to have the tough conversations before something goes wrong. I'm gonna get personal here for a second. My good friend's father just had to go into assisted living. Part of what was so hard is that it was done in a moment of crisis. I had another friend who sat down with his parents 10 years before his father ever had an illness. There was so much less stress and resentment when he had to be the one who executed on the decisions they'd all made together earlier. Business failures are exactly the same thing, especially when the entire revenue of the company is resting on the shoulders of your sales and marketing ops team and the stack they manage. When something goes wrong, a diagnosis can feel like finger pointing or blame. If something goes wrong, maybe no one will notice. Or maybe three departments will waste full rev cycles trying to diagnose root cause. It's critical to have a plan in place, to follow it, and to continuously improve it. Because that big failure is actually the moment that the company sees your value and your leadership. I've heard that the Ritz-Carlton, they intentionally make small mistakes before fixing the mistakes. Because customers are so much more aware of the quality and the amazing experience when you fix something than something that was perfect all along. It might seem counterintuitive, but a failure, especially on a big stage, is an incredible opportunity for that marketing or sales ops leader to show their leadership. It is critical to think about building the plan before the crisis happens. I saw a demand gen thought leader on LinkedIn last week. He was saying how terrifying it must be for a customer to hear that their, that their software providers are talking about building a plane while it's in the air. Let's build the plan or the plane once and then fly it. We can course correct if needed. So communication and all of that advanced thinking breeds trust. If something is ugly, being explicit about it with your team and stakeholders opens it up for resolution. Hiding it means people find out in a chaotic way and they resent you and your team probably. The good news is that we've taken a lot of the best practices from DevOps and engineering and put them into a model for the sales and marketing ops teams to help them think about that plan. We've also built all the tools you need to help a sales and marketing ops team implement it, from worksheets to monitoring platforms that integrate error identification and logging from sales tools like Salesforce or Dynamics, or your marketing and web tools for free into PagerDuty. All right, that was a lot, so let's dive in. I'd like to introduce the strategic quality model for sales and marketing operations. So systems thinking is baked into the culture of the DevOps teams. 
for a marketer, it's a novel concept. They've never heard of a live site incident or a regression test again, right? And that's okay. We put together the strategic quality model to introduce the concepts and let sales and marketing ops teams diagnose themselves, or maybe for a IT team supporting them, they can help diagnose where their, their teams are in maturity. Um, we have a lot of different stages and I'll run through them pretty quickly, but I'll be focusing primarily in this speech on communication and error maturity. All right, let's talk about transparency first. Um, we want you to feel in control um, and have your teams know that you're in control. On the quality model, we're gonna work from the bottom up. Um, so we're gonna start with the bottom and moving to what we consider to be the highest level of maturity. For transparency, that means you start out by in the systems and quality thinking by just diagramming your tech stack. Like you just wanna understand what's going on in it. Um, you can do this through partners um, that, that we work with, or you can do it with um, just a simple pen and paper on a whiteboard. As you get more mature, you're probably gonna publish some SLAs. So how often do we expect leads to be flowing across these systems or how often are the integrations happening? Just a basic list of the service level agreements that you have between these teams. So you can even define what's working and not working. Eventually you might move into something like Demand Central which is your internal SharePoint site where you're talking about the tools, how someone can get access to the tools, um, how someone can get admin access to the tools. Everyone always wants admin access to your systems. Finally, we're gonna move into published status. Um, and that's just saying, hey, we know these tools are up and working. Um, you'll see these with a lot of other infrastructure systems. It's just a status page, but you being able to communicate to your teams whether status is up or down, keeps them from going through all of those, those different um, stressors of trying to figure out if your system's up or down themselves. Finally, you can move into transparency of a postmortem process. And this would be publishing your postmortem as kind of the ultimate level of, of maturity. So reviewing errors when they happen, um, talking about the root causes and publishing it for everyone to see and tracking those SLAs in a way that everyone can see it out in the open gives them an incredible amount of confidence in your process. All right, let's get deep into our next level of the maturity model and it's our communication pillar. So as with everything, every we're gonna start with, there's no organized communication. And this is where most marketing and sales ops teams are today. There's no shame in this. Um, as we move up, we start to think about how are we communicating outages or errors or updates to our teams? Um, and, you know, most of those things start with just an ad hoc distribution group. It's probably one person on the team has an email list and they fire off updates to that email list, or maybe there's a Slack group. As we get more mature, we start to think about moving into defined distribution. This is a place that we love to partner with PagerDuty. So when something does happen, you can move into a pager duty group that has all of the rigor of being able to communicate this, bring in the right groups, um, increasing the awareness of this when it happens. Pager duty is a tool so many sales and marketing teams don't even realize is out there. And it's something that they should be using, especially if the organization has a, a subscription to it, to help do this defined distribution. Another great thing is self-subscription. Um, so if you don't have a tool, the very basic level of this could just be a Google group where people can control their subscription to, um, to getting access to it. The second you have that, though, they're going to ask for pager duty. As we move up in our communication rigor, we're going to start to be able to communicate our priorities. We're going to use things like OKRs or goals. So is it our quality mission? We're, we're trying to move up in quality and we're trying to make our marketing automation um, more stable, or we're trying to reduce the latency, the time it takes for a lead to be created in sales and marketing. And finally, you can move into a very well scripted and defined live site incident process. We actually have a great worksheet for free for anyone who wants access to this as well. And it's just, you know, who are the groups you're communicating to? How often are you gonna communicate? If you agree on all these things in advance, when you launch your process, it's going to feel um, so much more stable and no one is ever going to have to stop and think, should I communicate this? 
if you have an incident process, you've agreed with your stakeholders that um, an error that affects privacy is going to be communicated to leadership and the legal team within 24 hours of discovery. And we're going to update twice a day until it's resolved, for instance. So just agreeing on that process in advance really helps people feel better about what to do in the moment. You don't ever have that crisis feeling where you might make a decision to try and hide something because it's our instinct. It's everyone's instinct when something goes wrong. All right, finally, um, the utmost of communication is an established release process with proactive notifications. We've all seen our engineers doing this internally, right? You get a notification that this release is coming out and this is what you can expect to happen in advance. With systems thinking, our internal sales and marketing ops teams should be doing this as well. You never know what's gonna break someone else's system. All right, now let's move into error maturity. So something has gone wrong. What are we gonna do about it? Again, the, the baseline right now is people don't know what to do about it, so they hide it. They don't communicate it. Um, next is moving into like a bug tracking list. And this could be as simple as just having a Word doc or an Excel doc where you're tracking bugs as they happen and then making sure things are getting rectified and assigning them to a person. Um, there are also incredible tools that can help you do this. Um, and, and they can all be coordinated from a central hub when there's issues or communications that need to go out, like PagerDuty. Um, and then the, the bigger you get, you can start to think about having um, a full ticketing system. So uh, like, like the tools we just talked about and having those tools really integrate across all of your systems. Or moving into a greater level of maturity, thinking about SLA tracking. So we say that when a bug happens, we're going to strive to find root cause within two hours um, and seeing how well you're adhering to those, error, those errors. And the more frequently you get used to this, the more that tracking gets to be really important to show across the organization how great your team as, is at identifying things before um, releases go out or for solving things when something does slip through the cracks. Finally, um, you want to integrate these across all of your, your corporate systems. If it's not something that you have native integrations, again, like in PagerDuty or with Stack Moxie, then you want to integrate these. Um, you can write these integrations yourself. And then the final level of maturity is the idea of having a rollback. Um, so when you do find an error, does everyone have a way to be able to roll back your system immediately and figure out what's broken? Um, and fix what's broken so that then you can fix it when it's not impacting customers in a live situation. All right, so that was communication and error maturity. Now I'm going to just quickly talk through a couple of our other columns. There's monitoring and testing. That's what we love to focus on at Stack Moxie. It's what our product does. Um, and then capacity management. All right, so if you think about monitoring and testing, what we're trying to do is get from no monitoring to being able to predictively identify that things are broken. So we wanna move from just launching a little bit of testing every time we launch a campaign or maybe a program chain. We're gonna then move into having a really great checklist of everything we check to make sure the things that worked before still work after we launch our new campaign or program. We'll move into our aggression checklist, which is looking across all of our systems and understanding if we're introducing errors or we're regressing errors that have been solved in the past. Finally, getting into automated monitoring and predictive analytics and trend spotting. And then the final pillar of strategic quality model is the ability to uh, manage the capacity of your ops team. So, you know, we're thinking about things like is there a plan um, for your capacity? Obviously, again, we're starting with no plan. <laughs> and then we want to be able to talk about not just in our team for scoping. You know, everyone has a to-do list. But how do we talk about scoping projects across the team? And then finally, how do we think about total cost analysis? So if we're picking a project um, on our team versus a project on another team, how can we look at the costs, not just the actual hard costs, but the um, cost of picking one project over another. Um, finally, can you communicate 
that communication, uh, the capacity and prioritization to other leaders across your organization. So they understand why you selected the projects that they have, or and then also so they can make a case for why their projects should be prioritized. When you get real mature, you're able to start increasing capacity without headcount. Um, so how do you use automation or how do you streamline your projects to be able to increase the capacity of your team without headcount? And finally, how do you get into true predictability? Um, using agile methodology, methodologies, how can we say that this project that's really complex is gonna be released with certainty in six months? so that the whole team can help plan around our projects as well. All right, so shameless plug time. Thank you so much for having me today and letting me introduce you to our strategic quality model. Um, Stack Moxie is here to help. We'd love to remove the chaos from sales and marketing. Again, this is totally new to your sales and marketing ops folks for the IT folks, so I ask that you have patience with them. Um, but as they need help getting around this, getting their head around this, we're, we're here to help. So visit stackmoxie.com pagerduty, visit our booth. We've got free downloads for all of this. Our tool that helps with monitoring is 100% free as well, including our integration to pagerduty. So we'd love to help you connect the dots between sales and marketing technologies and pagerduty. Thank you.